<laughs> Clay, I got to ask you, did you get your invitation? I, I, I'm still looking in my <laughs> emails for the Tim Scott invitation to his wedding. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. So, in case y'all missed it, Mindy's back, y'all. Mindy mm-hmm. is back. Mindy is back, back, <laughs> back again. And uh, Tim Scott has proposed. Mm. He uh, proposed. What uh, did he propose? The... <laughs> <laughs> uh. He proposed that a really, uh, a really, I mean, it's pretty cold. So it's interesting. They were on a beach in South Carolina. It, mm-hmm. I, I didn't know folks go to beaches like that in the bitter, bitter cold. But he proposed and he said this in a statement. Timothy said, I've been very patient and prayerful, and I'm really excited and somewhat nervous, and I couldn't be more thankful for having found a soulmate and someone mm. who shares a mm. lot of the same interests, mm. passions, and goals that I do. Wow. And he goes on to quote Bible verses. Wow. So listen, Dr. Johnson, Tim Scott wants his VP slot. He wants it. He's craving it. He, he, and, and here's the scary thing. We don't know who Trump is going to choose, but I've said I think it will be a quote unquote person of color. I, I, mm. I do th- because they want to combat Kamala Harris, and the GOP only does things in reaction to what Democrats right. do. When Democrats right. make history, they throw someone up there. But here's what's really I, I, I want to know if you think he has a shot. But two, God forbid he did become VP, mm. the loyalty that Mike Pence didn't show. What do you think? I, well, first, like I said, I I am I want to I want to congratulate Tim Scott on his nuptials. Still waiting for that invitation. I heard I heard the wedding's being officiated by Charlie Crist. Um, I, oh, I also heard uh, Morgan Whalen is going to be singing at the wedding. Allegedly, <laughs> I'm, joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Y'all totally y'all hear right. what we're getting at here. Um, so so here's the thing. Um, I I I, I disagree with you in this in this particular regard. One. Like I said, I always thought that Tim Scott's sort of long, the most memorable part of his presidential campaign was his sort of perpetual, oh, I totally have this hot girlfriend. She's just at another high school and you've totally never met her. And like, it's it's like the fact that the fact that you are a sitting senator from South Carolina who have real legislation that you tried to push through, but your own party, the only thing they care about is whether or not you have a romantic partner that is a woman. Let's be clear, because that was always the underpinning of it. The South it Carolina didn't want the possibility of having two senators whose personal romantic proclivities are unknown. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, that's let's just be candid. That's what this is. But the fact that that's it, that basically the man was forced. I, I, I mean, again, I don't I have no idea what Tim Scott's personal preferences are, but it was almost like he was forced into a marriage. Tim Scott's been in public life for years. And now suddenly when he runs for president, he magically has to have a girlfriend who magically now becomes his fiance. And and again, I'm not saying that that politicians don't marry uh, in order to achieve success. Partner selection is very political. I've always said that. Race, class, color, everything. But it's disappointing. And it should tell Tim Scott what they really think about you. It's like Cube used to say, here's what they think about you. That the only thing that they wanted from you is for you to prove that you're a heterosexual man uh, and that you can find yourself a wife. And I'll be honest, I don't think that Donald Trump cares at this point. Um, We we have a a thoroughly, thoroughly functional government under Joe Biden as far as trying to manage the country. But Joe Biden and this administration have been absolute, utter, 100 percent failures. And in the case of Merrick Garland, damn near complicit. And allowing Trump to regain power. And Trump at this point cares so little about the actual electoral process in this country. I don't think he's going to pick a person of color, Clay. I don't, I don't think he cares at this point. I think, I think Donald Trump believes that he has learned so much about their previous coup attempt that they are planning it better in a more sophisticated, non-traceable way now. And he don't need nobody black. He doesn't need a woman. He does, I mean, he won the presidency in 2016 with Mike Pence. And then he tried to hang the guy, and he's still going to run away with his own primary. I don't think he cares about Tim Scott. And if he picked Tim Scott, as you said, that would galvanize more black people to turn out to vote than anything Joe Biden has said in you the last say that again. months. That, that's what Herschel Walker did. Folks yeah. forget, as much as we say, oh, black men are go. I mean, first of all, we hear this every election cycle. I cover this in the book. During the Reagan era, they were saying, oh, 
Black people are, are going back to the Republican Party. They say this every election cycle. But you're right that having a figure like Tim Scott or, and Reese Colbert has predicted Ben Carson, which would be uh, a complete train Equally wreck. hilarious. <laughs> Equally it, hilarious. It, it would incentivize us. We'd say, wait yes. a minute now. We, 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 wait a he minute. going to see but, these hands aren't so gifted when it comes to being on the campaign <laughs> trail. I'll put it like that. <laughs> but you bring up a really good point that I've been trying to tell people that – but you're, you're taking a little further that I didn't think of it completely in that way you know there was a, a, a poll that came out that republicans and democrats are won't believe the uh results of whatever the 2024 election is mm-hmm. well republicans have a different reason to, to not believe it right democrats there was a whole damn coup attempt yeah he literally called on the pentagon allegedly do i gotta say allegedly at this point to no. to seize voting machines Mm-hmm. I mean, there was a serious reason why why we would be skeptical, because there was an attempt to overturn the election. You had Dan, Daniel Cameron and Byron Donalds advocating to overturn the votes in areas like Philadelphia and Detroit. Yes. I mean, there was there was an actual attempt. So I don't feel like our uh, concerns are rooted in in conspiracy theories or this crazy vaccine or whatever thing that the trans folks and whatever what or DEI whatever. This is real, and I think you're right that my concern is this is the reason why I didn't want him to get the nomination, and it appears that he will, because even when he loses, my concern is what the fuck is going to happen? Because you're right. He doesn't care about the votes. He no. doesn't care about the Electoral College. No. That, is, that is, does not matter to him at all. Now, I thought for optics— he, I feel like for optics, he still might choose a person of color. Could be wrong. I, hell, uh, I was a Julian Castro supporter. Lord knows I, <laughs> my predictions are off. <laughs> but you're right about That's really scary, Jason, because I feel, I feel you. He does not care about Mm-mm. the voting process. And that's why I, I, I kind of did want Nikki Haley. I thought she would lose. But I wanted them to win because I felt like, well, at least I know they will concede if they lose. So – that's scary as hell, man. I, the the biggest fear that I have, and I've talked about this before, I've talked about this on the air, I've talked about this on my podcast, um, is this last, this final season of Succession. And the mm. election episode of Succession, if you've never watched any other part of the series, look up the election episode of Succession, the final season. It is, it is a nightmare. And that is what I'm concerned about heading into this 2024 election. What they have is, they don't quite have a, a Trump allegory, but they have... Uh, sort of a, a sophisticated DeSantis, this super duper right wing guy who hides it under sounding charming and, and folksy. Uh, he's running against a sort of Latino, you know, center left candidate. And, you know, they set up the scenario. And of course, Succession is about sort of a, a Rupert Murdoch S family. They run sort of their world's equivalent of Fox News and all the fighting and with amongst these rich kids. But the core is the entire election is tied and it comes down to Wisconsin. Right now, of course, that's unrealistic. You wouldn't have an election where it was tied 271, 271, whatever. But what happens is there is a terrorist attack on a voting station in Milwaukee. And they've lost upwards of like 30,000 votes. Like somebody blew up the building. And the show ends without a resolution. Like that happens in, I think, the third to last episode. They blow up the voting station. And so everybody's trying to figure out what the heck happens. What's your contingency for this? Because this is the state where it all boils down to. If you lose a couple of hundred ballots here and there, that's one thing. But if you have somebody engage in an act of terrorism and destroy a voting station, how do you account for those votes? Could we go to our Supreme Court? No, we can't. Not the Supreme Court we have now. Do we make those people vote? We don't know who's voted and who hasn't, right? That's the kind of thing I worry about because what has happened under the Biden administration, is they have said it is open season to engage in political violence in this country to achieve your ends. They have punished no one. They have punished no one for January 6th. They have run out the clock for Donald Trump. And so his followers go into this fall believing, if I want to drive by and and open fire on a line of brown voters in a particular city because I don't care if I become a martyr for the MAGA cause. You don't think people will try that? You don't think, there's no security at most polling stations. 
If somebody left a backpack there and wanted to blow one up, they could. And I'm not talking about hyperbolic scenarios. I'm talking about things that occur in general. We saw how these people behave about masking regulations. They tried to kill a governor. They tried mm. to kidnap and kill a governor. And, you know, my, my parents used to joke about this all the time. Uh, you know, they said, you know, the worst thing about, about people in prison is that most people in prison spend their time trying to figure out how to do the crime better. Uh, when they get out <laughs> and 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 the idea that these people haven't even faced any consequences roger stone's not in jail right mm -hmm. trump's law more trump lawyers have gone in jail than anybody else right, right so we are looking at an election this fall where joe biden could very likely win the election by all practical measures but the level of violence that he has allowed the Trump and, and sort of Trump cult acolytes to engage in could disrupt the entire thing. That's what worries me. And a Tim Scott would be the first person on the podium, on a stage right. with some right. absolutely disingenuous cry. We want peace. We want understanding. Right. You didn't even vote for an investigation into January 6th. I don't exactly. care what you or any of your other Candace Owens, Hodge twins, Arthur Davis, what's left of you know the remainder of sort of diamonds. I don't care what any of those people say because they've all sold out to power Every because they one. somehow think it's going to benefit them.